I apologize for the lighting. It's bathroom lighting. It is what it is. But today's video is a bit different from my normal videos. It is still nursing related, but I hope you enjoyed this new series. It's called In My Skin Great Nurses. And more of it's going to be coming out in February. Um, this person I'm going to be talking about is a great nurse, nurse educator, activist, and her name is Estelle Macy. If you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe because I really love my videos. I mean, thank you in advance. Um, and you can follow me on the lovely platforms here and we'll be best friends there and, you know, just share inspiration uplifting each other that kind of thing because that's what i do that's what i'm about the positivity We're about the positivity anyway i'm going to be doing my skincare while i share with you the wonderfulness that is still macy okay okay and if you're interested in anything that i'm using in this video on my skin oh my god i'm renting from someone while i'm on assignment and the sounds are amazing here anyway um but if you're interested in anything that i'm using on my skin i will put it into the description bar below <laughs> that's so amazing she's a nurse she's a nurse educator and an Alcrabis, she was born in Texas, 1901. She was number eight of 11, 11 children. I mean, my mother is like number four of 12, so I'm not surprised about this number, but like, because it can happen. But anyway. She was born to the parents of Hall and Betty Macy. Love Betty. Love the name Betty. Oh my gosh. It's like old. But I love I love, I love it. Anyway, interesting to that Hall and Betty, no education. But they didn't send just one, not two, but all eleven children to college, okay? All eleven. So where did Estelle go for her college? She went and got her teacher certification at Prairie View State Normal Institute Industrial something or other, Industrial College. And I think it's like now called like Prairie View A&M University, to be honest with you. So we are from Texas. That's probably like a school that people know. Right. So now Estelle the teacher, she's been working at it for a bit, but something dramatic, a life threatening happens, like near death for her, that changes her trajectory from being Estelle the teacher to Estelle the nurse. Anyway, so Estelle enrolls into the St. Louis City Hospital. Um, now this is like what? 1923 she graduates from this from the st louis school right she graduates as a nurse she's a nurse we're a nurse and gets this shortly after graduating from st louis she becomes head nurse okay head nurse and she stays head nurse until like 1926 where she moves to um kansas city and she starts teaching at a Lincoln School of Nursing. So even though homegirl is no longer like teacher teacher, she decides I'm gonna teach other nurses. Hence where we're like, she's a great nurse educator. Like she's over here just educating the masses. Anyway, anyway, so she's teaching at Lincoln, uh, Lincoln School of Nursing and she just not just sitting there like, okay, I'm a nurse and now I'm teaching life fulfilled. No, 
the girl is still hungry for knowledge. Mm -hmm. So what she does on her summers, she goes and takes summer courses at Columbia University um, at the, in the teaching department. She's going to improve herself. I need to do No, she's, she's teaching nurses. Right? She's going to do more with herself. Okay, it's going to be water. But anyway. So, eventually, her summer classes. Her summer, her part time summer classes turn into like full time, making her full time student. She full time goes, and that what leads her to get her bachelor's degree. Subsequently, getting her master's degree in 1998, making her the first black anybody to earn that degree in that capacity. Okay? Like, being ahead of the class but still working from the back of the class. Amazing. Amazing. Anyway, moving on. So, anyway, she, she has actually a behind her thing. She's a bachelor, she's a master's, now she's a nurse, she's a nurse educator with, an, with a master's degree. She's an MS and all right, boom. She meets and marries Dr. Bedford Riddle. So if you knew Estelle Massey, but you didn't know her as Massey, you knew her as Riddle, that's her married name. So I don't think they have, I think they have children, but like, because there's no mention of her with kids. But like, whatever, they're married. And she takes a pre uh, opposition at uh, Friedman's, um, She was originally at Friedman's Hospital, which is now known as Howard's University Hospital. As an educational director, not just a professor, an educational director, okay? We absolutely love this. And this, while she's in this position, the national, oh my god, national color of graduate nurses approaches her and elects her as the president of their association. They're like, you, you are it, okay? She worked with like other trailblazing nurses at the time, which you could probably find out in February about them. But like, people like Mabel Strups, Stops? Stoppers. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but we're gonna find out. Anyway. The that was like 19, right? If we all know our history, what's gonna happen in the 1930s? World, World War II's about to pop off, right? And that starts like what, 1939? Anyway, somehow Estelle <laughs> gets named as like a war correspondent kind of consult for consultant for um, the National Negro Nursing uh, Corps for War Services. And that hits like around 1943. But the whole time, while well, before this whole consulting, they're fighting for like these nurses to like join the military nurse corps, you know, for them to be Recognize, just go to the nursing schools or whatnot because the nursing schools had a quota, right? You only let, mm -mm, that's too much. And military, such as like the Navy, the Army, had a ban. Like, no, please pass go, do not collect $200. Absolutely not. So, getting this position in by 1943 helped push that and basically made it even possible by the end of the war. And when does the war end? The war is when? 1945, right? So it's like toward, more toward that end of the war. Yeah. The nursing schools are letting in black individuals, as well as the army and the navy 
military all the way around, allowing uh, for them to come in and join their nurse corps and be like, here was, they were, they inducted about 2,000. 2,000 people in. And they're just sitting there and they're like, we're ready to fight. Wild to me, but like, they wanted to do it. Right? So what do you mean? What? Is it black catching? I mean, it's not a disease, but whatever. You know. They want to go do it, do it, huh? So, now it's the end of the war. She ended up taking a position in New York as an instructor at um, New York University, NYU. And in their um, nursing department. Um, basically making her the first instructor at that school. Being black. I mean, because why? Because now nursing school are allowing black individuals in. So I guess maybe that curtailed into hiring black instructors. And why not hire the one of the black instructors who were pivotal in pushing for the integration of nursing schools? Boom. Yeah. Anyway, amongst this time of like World War II and whatnot, Dr. Bedford Riddle obviously must have died. I don't know when he died, but he must have died sometime around. I'm gonna say he died because they don't even say she's the horse. I'm gonna say she was a widower. Okay, I like to think that. Okay, so she met this dude. I keep I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna bring him down to dude level, but like, she was a guy. His name is Herman. Herman Osborne. So if you didn't know Estelle Macy is Estelle Macy, and you knew her Estelle Macy Riddle, now you should know her as Estelle Macy Riddle Osborne. Okay. She, uh, she marries in like 1947. Okay, 1947. She's newly married. She takes up her, a new position a couple years later in 1954 as, again, as a professor, but an associate professor for a nursing department at the University of Maryland. Needless to say, a style life was like a lifelong of just pure education, you know? I have no idea why I'm putting this on so thick. This is ridiculous. I can't go back now. It's too late. I don't even have like the spatula. This is not what you do. This is not don't do this. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway, she, <laughs> needless to say, she made herself a lifelong, you know, an educator, an activist, living a life worth living, okay? Like, she did not sit on the sidelines. She saw improvement and she. She saw improvement and she saw that she could be the catalyst in making that improvement, that improvement known, you know? She made waves in the ocean of discrimination, segregation, and just untrailed, just a new unblazed path that black individuals would never, never would have been invited to freely and willingly. She sat in those chairs, she became the first to be seen in those positions and that capacity. I mean, greatness, right? It's now December, December 12th to be exactly, and it's now 1981. Estelle has taught up many other schools between this time. I mean, her life was dedicated to teaching nurses and just helping procure nurses out there to be what we can be now, and I hope even better. But um, yeah, December 12, 1981, and Dear Estelle passes away. In the following year of 1982, the American Nurse Association 
uh, inducts her into their Hall of Fame. Hey guys, if you made this far, I want to thank you for taking the time and enjoying hearing these trailblazing accounts of a stall. And happy MLK Day. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and wash this off of my face. Remember to follow me on all of my platforms and thank you be best friends there. Just uplift and just, you know, inspire one another. And I hope to see you in the next video. Hey, and also to see you in February where will I, me, you, will go and continue this in my skin, great nurses, and learn about these great traveling nurses like Estelle, Macy, Riddle, Osborne, Giddy Girl. I mean, two husbands. I'm struggling. I'm struggling here. So I'm just gonna wash this off my face, but you guys have for real to remember if no one told you, you will be and you are a great nurse. Remember to take care of yourself, because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of yourself.